Hey there, it's Derek once again from Pacific Coast Auto. Today we're looking at a 1993 Suzuki Jimny. Some of you guys may know this as the Samurai, but in Japan they're called the Jimny. And this is the Jimny Sierra, which means it comes with a 1300cc 1.3 liter inline four cylinder engine, uh, as opposed to the regular version of the Jimny, which comes with a 660cc turbocharged engine, which classifies it as a K car. Now this one here is the non-K car version, so you get a little bit more power in it, but you get more expensive registration in Japan because it's not a K car. And so because of that, you'll typically find that the Sierra version will cost less than the K car version, so you get the bigger engine, more power, and probably, get out of the way of girls riding their bikes, that's a mom and a daughter. <laughs> um, yeah, you probably don't get that much of a difference in fuel economy, even though this engine is twice the size of the other one. The other one's a small displacement turbo engine, and so in order to get um, a decent amount of, uh, of power, you're going to have to be revving it harder, which means higher stress, less mileage. And so I suspect that they're probably pretty close in, in real life. This one seems to be in pretty good condition. It was bought from auction um, for the exports to the USA. And a lot of these Jimneys, like the ones in the US, the Samurai, uh, a I mean, a lot of them are rusty. This one is not so much. It has it in a couple of places, but uh, better than average. And I really uh, enjoy the classic look of these vehicles. Nowadays, they're, they're looking better than ever. Okay, so uh, engine running condition is good, but it was idling too high when we started it. After a while, it settles itself down. Oil and coolant both don't look like an issue. Looks like you should probably change the oil because it's a bit dirty, but other than that, no, no real issues. No rust inside the engine room. And I looked underneath the car and I couldn't find any rust underneath the car. The only rust I could really find on the body was right here. There's a tiny bit. And on this hinge, there's a tiny bit. Now, you don't know if there's going to be rust underneath the parts if you take them off, but it is pretty well protected from road, salt, rocks, that sort of thing by having this thing here and this thing here. So that's good. Uh, I also am a little bit concerned about the diamond plate there because that's a typical place that you're going to see rust on these. Um, but I don't see any if you look at the top. And you would usually be able to see some of that rust peeking out from the top if there were any. Okay, so these are electronic fuel injected cars, but kind of, sort of. If you take a look, that looks oddly like a carburetor. Uh, I suppose you can call it throttle body injection, which is a midway point between carbureted and fuel injected. So it still is electronically injected, single fuel injector style. I love these, wow. Boy, do I ever love them. I want one myself and I want to go off-roading in it because these, people are realizing, are the ideal vehicle for off-roading for nearly all purposes. They don't have a lot of power, but they have an extremely small wheelbase. They have solid axles and selectable four-wheel drive with low gear range. And so, very close to the ideal rock crawling vehicle. I'm gonna lower the hood. I'm gonna to need to put the camera down for that. And so, you get tires cam. And tires cam is finished. Have a quick look at the good looks of this. Mm, and I love this low roof hardtop. They also come in convertible or high roof uh, versions. And uh, the Sierra version, because it's not limited um, to the size of the vehicle, you get these fender flares, just like the Samurai. Whereas the K-Car version with the 660cc doesn't get those fender flares because it would be too big to fit into the K car classification. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the auction inspection sheet here and then around the outside of the vehicle. Look at this, two mirrors. It's cool. Okay, so this was from the auction house from which we bought this one. So it's a 1993. I'm just gonna translate this to you from Japanese to English. Uh, Jimny Sierra. The grade is RA, interior is B, 153, 780 kilometers. Purchased from user, as in a dealer trade in five speed manual transmission. You can still find them in automatics, but the manuals are the ones that everybody wants, and you'll pay more for the manuals a little bit. Aftermarket exhaust on it, aftermarket wheels, aftermarket suspension. Actually, the suspension looks pretty stock, except for shackles, which gives it uh, probably about a two inch rate, uh, uh, lift. 
it is leaf suspension. It makes it really easy to lift it up if you want. You can do body or you can do bigger shackles. Uh, but I quite like the size of this one. And you would be surprised at how capable a vehicle is even with just this suspension. Even the stock ones are pretty remarkable. Okay, so steering wheel wear, seat wear, windshield rock chip, interior dirty, scratched, and ripped. Right front inner panel dented, and that's really the only damage from the accident. And so the right front inner panel is inside here, but exterior wise, you can't see any damage whatsoever on any part, and so that's nice. Doesn't even look like one that has been in an accident. You have to be very careful not to confuse R grade or RA grade with a shit salvage vehicle because in my mind this accident was less than you know five miles per hour and is definitely not what you would consider a salvage title vehicle in the u.s which means a written off a vehicle okay so exterior has some parts with paint marks paint fade and paint peeling i'll display those when we go around steering wheel and shift knob are modified aftermarket steering wheel no power steering in this one underside surface rust corrosion and painted and the roof has been painted I looked underside, I couldn't find any corrosion. I'm guessing that there is some because somebody marked that. But if you look underneath, and I got a video of this, it looks really tidy. So looking at the frame rails, there's no sign of corrosion on the frame rails anywhere. It has been painted, and that's something you do not want to watch out for when it's painted uh, underside is, but it says there's corrosion. There probably is some, but it, de it definitely doesn't look like it's a, a rotten, crusty car like you might be worried about if you saw that mark. And so that's a thumbs up console part has modifications and a cut part and the, the roof as I said was painted it's black you have some paint crack things in here a little bit it's basically a type of paint fade you also got the same type of thing on uh, this uh, fender over here not that one. Oh, did I go all the way around I'll show you that later yeah it is this one so see the cracking there it's the same kind of cracking as is on the roof but uh, fenders roof not a, not a really incredibly big deal it is a bit weird to see the black roof on a red car because typically people like to paint white roof on cars that look kind of classic or land cruiser style and really this is closer to an uh, to a defender in terms of styling with the stout front nose and the circular eyes or maybe a 70 series land cruiser and i love my 4x4s this one here is Probably one I would go for if it was going to be a 4x4 only like fun vehicle. Okay, looking at this, we have re repainted panels basically everywhere. We have uneven paint over here, uneven paint over here, paint cracks over here, and it says corrosion here? Really? Or are they just joking? This is a typical place that you'll see corrosion. Along the sill is where you'll see corrosion. In the back corners, you'll find it, but in the typical places for the corrosion, I don't see it here, and I don't see any on this fender. This seal part here, you can see some like bad paint in this area, but everything looks the same way as it usually does in these vehicles. So, I'm gonna say no corrosion. Okay, so let's do once around here. Yes, love the look of these. Uh, they're a four-seater. You don't get an awful lot of room in there. I recommend them to anyone who is 5'11 and shorter. You could do it if you're bigger than that, but you're going to be inconvenienced on the interior, I would say. I'm 5'10. It's, it's fine for me. It's comfortable to drive. And uh, it's worth it. It's worth it to be cramped in a little bit because style-wise, these are starting to become so rare basically everywhere except for Japan and um, oh if you are interested in getting the 1300 like I said though they are rarer than the K car versions because people in Japan want that uh, savings for the uh, registration cost and that means those ones stay on the road for longer and don't get exported as often and so for a 1300 to make it this far is fairly rare and then you have to worry about is the condition of it going to be good and uh, so my recommendation is if you want a Jimny consider both options and then just bid appropriately on which ones come up you might find it's easier to buy a uh, turbocharged 660cc version 
which in itself is kind of cool to have one with such a small engine but still 64 horsepower. I think this one, I don't know exactly what the power is, but probably somewhere around 78 or 80 horsepower. Okay, so fenders have some paint damage. It looks like they were red at one point, but then changed to black. This looks like it's the uh, original material that the, uh, the over fender was. There's some damage there in the paint and some damage here. And then this part here has been painted poorly. They said that this back section here is uneven paint. So look around the fuel cap. And the car has front and rear bumpers. Aftermarket ones, which house the lights, which is quite nice. And then a cover for the fuel tank. Aftermarket exhaust. And it's actually a pretty noisy slash low frequency exhaust, which is typically not what you would get at a 1.3. Usually the fender meets the bumper here, but these uh, plates here with the smaller bumper give you more, um, I guess, approach angle, departure angle. Chassis hook, rear shackles, and everybody loves the mud flaps. Suzuki. It has door style back. Not much to talk about there. You don't get very much room in the back for your groceries, but Put these seats down. You're not going to have people right in the back of these, most likely. Space in the back's not that bad, though. It's not terrible. No rust along this back sill here, which is a place you're going to want to look out for rust. Close the door. We got a dent from here to here. Have a close look. Okay, give you a quick peek at this side. Uh, interior is probably on the worst side compared to the exterior. Um, seats are ripped. Five speed manual, yes. Makes me want to drive one of these. I don't particularly want to drive on the road. When I, if I drive one of these on the road, I'm just gonna be thinking, I wanna drive off road. And this might actually get me into trouble because, you know, they always have that grassy area near the on-ramps and the off-ramps. If there's traffic backed up, it might be a little bit hard for me to not take the shortcut going through the grass if I was driving one of these. So damage there to the car, as well as, oops, I've closed the door on my seat belt. That's what that is. You got seat rip here. And then the seam came undone here and here and here and that's the same thing on this seat over here so it might be time for some new seats they work as seats though like you can still sit on them a nardy steering wheel it is smaller than the original which gives you more room but you have to be stronger than original drivers because no power steering in a smaller steering wheel means less leverage Lots of pedals, at least 33% more than most. Gauges are very 80s style and they're dusty, so I'm gonna draw a happy smile on here. Thanks, Focus. You can't see it very well. Uh, wooden modification for your iPhone. What a weird thing. Let's see if we can get some focus. When it gets to the last report of the day, the camera's like, nah, nah, I don't want to focus on anything. It's like the last hour of work. I get to go home in an hour, so no, nope, no more focus for me. That's not a true story. In real life, it's, oh my gosh, I have one hour left. And I got all these things to do. Okay, so you can choose two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or low four-wheel drive. And instructions in Japanese, which you'd only be able to read if you're Japanese. And a, a chunk bit out. It's like take a bite out of crime, but in this case, take a bite out of dashboards. Which is not necessarily good advice, even if an anthropomorphic dog is telling you to do it. This is a toll collection box. Fog lights. 
I don't think the car has fog lights anymore. This is what the gauges look like when they're turned on. Love that orange glow. Ooh, give me back the 80s. Mostly green glow in the 80s though. Headliner, it's decent. And then these bars on the back windows, they're made to um, prevent the back windows from shattering if you're going to be using these as cargo. Close the door. And we'll take a look at what it looks like with the headlights on, because I rarely ever get to do that. What a cool looking car this is. Everybody needs a Jimny in their life. Okay, end of the video there. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and peace out!